COVID-19 is a novel coronavirus, and what uh, the word novel coronavirus means, it's a virus we haven't seen before. Uh, and it's a virus that's different from a normal coronavirus, which typically circulates among humans causing uh, mild illnesses. The reason it's called COVID-19 is because it was identified in 2019. The symptoms have been interesting in that they've evolved over time from the beginning. Uh, when COVID-19 first came out, you know, the primary symptoms were dry cough, uh, shortness of breath, fatigue, muscle ache, body ache. Um, they've evolved since that time into more uh, things like loss of taste, uh, loss of sense of smell. Uh, some of the symptoms that are more concern or trouble breathing, uh, persistent pain, uh, confusion, inability to stay awake, if those type symptoms uh, reveal themselves and you really should seek medical attention. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, I think we're going to be battling COVID at some level throughout uh, 2021. Anyone who's experienced any of the symptoms that are uh, on the, the CDC website should absolutely get tested. Uh, if you believe that you have come into contact with someone uh, who has COVID-19, uh, you, you, you absolutely uh, should get tested. Um, it, it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to, to testing to see if you have an active infection. One important thing to keep in mind is if you do have the concern or concern enough where you get tested, once you get tested, it's really important that you self-quarantine uh, for 10 to 14 days or until you get the results back from your test. There are three primary uh, tests for COVID-19. You have an antigen test, you have a PCR test, and you have an antibody test. The antigen test and the PCR test um, are tests to identify if you have an active virus in your body. The antibody test is a test uh, to check and see if you've previously uh, been exposed to COVID-19 and it, it will help identify if your body's created any natural uh, antibodies to fight the virus. Most people will say if you have the antigen test and you get a positive re uh, result from that test, you really should have the PCR test to try to confirm that. It's a little bit different analysis of the specimen that's collected. Uh, for our purposes, we just recommend uh, initially that you just start with the PCR test to, to find out if you have a the active COVID-19 virus. While we're discussing the, the, the testing uh, between the, the antigen and the PCR testing, uh, you know, testing is a, is, a, is a serious economical decision when it comes to the employers or colleges or schools uh, because that running these tests every, you know, couple of weeks really is expensive. And so we've worked with our lab uh, in a partnership to come up with pool testing. And what pool testing does, uh, we can do the PCR test and you take uh, four individuals who will provide a sample. Uh, those samples will ship together to the lab. The lab combines those tests into one test. If it's negative, you're good to go. Uh, if the test is positive, then you go back and you retest those, uh, those individuals. Um, but even if you have a five and a half to six percent positive rate where you're going back and retesting, it still cuts testing costs for these large uh, groups by about 65%. Uh, and we think for, you know, that helps alleviate those economic concerns uh, and encourages them to, to do the right thing and test their population. The primary concern for the test is, is with the accuracy or sensitivity of that test. Uh, when they, the government identified that there was a shortage of tests, there were a lot of companies and labs that uh, rushed to come up with a test uh, which were approved under uh, the emergency use authorization. Uh, our concern early on was some of these tests were not uh, adequately vetted, and you have some tests that showed a sensitivity rate of 80%. And what that means, if you take a test that is sensitivity at 80%, there's a 20% chance the test is going to be wrong. Uh, so we did a lot of due diligence to, to find the labs that we wanted to partner with and we identified tests were in that you know, 97, 98, 99 uh, sensitivity rating 
uh, that's, a, that's a primary concern. The secondary concern is to make sure that whatever test you take, that the results are delivered to you within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, if your test results are running past 48 hours, there really isn't any point in, in taking that test because the information would be stale at that point. One of the other uh, big issues regarding testing is the response time once those results come back in. Uh, one of the biggest advantages that MedCall brings to the table is we have 440 physicians board certified in emergency medicine in our practice group. Uh, these guys have been on the front lines of the coronavirus fight since day one, have a tremendous amount of experience. So if a test result comes back positive, we simultaneously notify the patient and the physician. And as soon as we can get that patient on the phone, we immediately connect them with one of our emergency physicians who can do a further assessment and make sure there are no other underlying health uh, concerns. Um, so that's critically important is that you know, is the response is fairly immediate. If you're talking about a large group, uh, like a company with employees or a school or a, a university that has a large body of employees, um, we think it's uh, a good policy to test twice a month because you have so many people moving around uh, that you really can't track what they do when they're not at work or they're not at school or not, not in class. So we think probably twice a month is a good policy there. Uh, you know, more often is better, uh, but the economics come into play when you're making that type of decision. On a personal level, uh, you think it's good to get tested once and you know that, you know, you're not COVID uh, positive and then be, so that sort of sets a good baseline for you to know that you're negative. Then you have to watch the risk factors. As long as you don't expose yourself, you're probably good to go. If you find yourself in an environment where you think maybe you've been exposed to COVID or potentially been expo exposed to COVID, it's probably a good idea to get tested. There's a fear factor in, uh, in flu season converging with COVID-19. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't wrestled it to the ground at this point, uh, and we're already entering into flu season now. And I think when th these two things come together, uh, there's a lot of similarities in the symptoms that you would see from flu or COVID. Um, but we, we should have resolved the issue by now. COVID is not the flu. It is a very different disease from, from the flu. Uh, and the risk is with COVID is, is long-term uh, health issues that, that, that can arise as a result of being exposed from COVID. So as these two things come together, we think it's critically important that you get tested and identify what you do have. Do you have the flu or do you have COVID? And those tests uh, will be pretty definitive to identify which infection is in your system. Uh, but there's no doubt it's gonna be a struggle uh, through this flu season. It's interesting to me how uh, the mask has become such a controversial issue and, and often an issue that's centered around uh, politics. Um, you, you sort of have to take a look at it and, and, and understand that COVID is a, is a serious disease and, and, it, and it can leave long-term serious health issues. So, um, you know, does a mask help? I mean, I think the, the science is pretty clear that, that masks help prevent the spread of COVID. Uh, will it keep you from, uh, from being infected with COVID? No. Um, you know, my answer to the question is, should you wear a mask? Probably. We do a lot of things in our lives uh, where we, we take preventative measures in, in various aspects of our life where those measures are not 100% effective, but, but yet we identify them as being effective. So listen, uh, I, I'm no uh, happier wearing a mask than anybody else. It's frustrating to get out of your car and walk to a uh, store and realize, hey, geez, I forgot my mask. You got to turn in and go back and get it. Um, it, it it's an inconvenience, uh, but I think it is a it is a human courtesy that uh, if you're unable to maintain a safe distance from folks, you know, in the grocery store where where people are gathered and you can't keep that social distancing, it's probably a really good idea to to wear a mask out of respect. Vaccines, that's another somewhat controversial project. I'm not a uh, doctor and, and I'm not an expert on vaccinations. Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm very excited about the, you know, the fast track where we, we've put research on uh, to try to cut a lot of the red tape to, to move this thing uh, as quickly as possible. I think it's the right thing to do. 
Uh, anytime you're doing something fast, there's a, you, know, you run a risk. Uh, vaccines is another uh, serious uh, decision. So, you know, my answer uh, to getting, should, should I get a vaccine is probably eventually. Um, I don't necessarily want to be the first person in line, but, but I definitely, I want to be in line. What is normal anymore? COVID-19 is something that, you know, a year ago, none of us were concerned about. Um, you know, I have seen a little bit of the research on uh, the caves in China, uh, the viruses that are in there, the 500 or so pathogens. I think one of the most disturbing things I heard from one of the, uh, the biologists that had been in there for, been working in that area for about 10 years, said he wasn't worried about uh, this COVID virus, he was worried about the next one. So I think we're probably in a new normal of always being more cautious, better hygiene, wash your hands uh, more often. Uh, just be aware that these viruses are uh, a serious concern and an ongoing concern. So I think it's, you know, when we get back to the point where plexiglass shields are gone, masks are gone, you know, probably uh, before the end of 2021. But I think the new normal is to always be aware of, of you know, what's lurking on planet Earth.